Razer's moving on from fancy gaming keyboards to a brand new gaming smartphone. Hey you, it's me, Curtis P. It's time for some coffee. Yesterday was a big day for Razer. The gaming company has announced their very first smartphone called the Razer Phone. This is the smartphone built for gaming with its large 5.7 inch 2K display and 4,000 milliamp battery. You can play games for days on this thing. But the big standout part of this brand new display is its ability to run at 120 hertz, meaning everything from games to web browsing can be done at 120 frames per second on the device. Now, this is very similar to what we see on the brand new iPad pads that Apple announced this year, but Razer is the very first company to bring to market this type of display in a phone. Otherwise, on the front of the phone, you'll notice that unlike other phone designs for 2017, there are two large bezels on the top and bottom. This is home to the brand new front-facing Atmos speaker systems, which you can tune yourself inside of the settings for the best audio experience. The new speaker is allowing you to listen to music louder than ever before on a mobile device of this size. The back of the phone is pretty simple. There's the standard standard Razer logo along with two 12 megapixel cameras. Inside of the phone, you'll find a whopping eight gigs of RAM and 64 gigs of built-in storage. But don't worry if that's not enough for you, you can use the expandable storage and an SD card to boost that up. As for the software, well, the phone keeps it nice and clean. It runs Android 7.1.1 and the Nova Prime Launcher. So you'll get a very close to stock Android experience here with no bloatware from the carrier or Razer themselves installed on the device. Razer has also announced that Android 8.0 Oreo will be coming to the phone in early 2018. But the one exception to this brand new phone's design is its lack of a headphone jack. But at this point, I think we can just predict all future smartphones are gonna ditch the headphone jack altogether. So if you wanna pick up a Razer phone for yourself, it will be going on sale in mid-November for a price of $699 US and it'll be coming unlocked from Razer. Overall, to end it all off, I think the device looks really awesome. I'd love to get my hands on it to really test it out more in the future. But that's just my opinion on the Razer phone. I'd love to hear what you have to say. Let me know in the comment section down below. I'd love to hear it. Into the quick news for today, Google is looking to make it easier to pair new Bluetooth devices with your new smartphone. A new software feature called Fast Pair is in the works that will allow you to quickly pair Bluetooth headphones and speakers with just one tap. Think of it like the pairing system Apple uses for AirPods, but now on Android. Using Bluetooth Low Energy, Android will automatically discover any Bluetooth devices near you and display a pairing prompt on the top of your device display, along with the device's new name and the product photo the phone can pull from the web. Then with one simple tap, your phone can pair with the brand new device. Currently, only the Google Pixel Buds, Libertone's Q Adapt on-ear headphones, and the Plantronics Voyager 8200s will work with this feature. Next, Amazon has pushed out an interesting new update to their iPhone app today that allows you to place their products in the real world thanks to AR kit. Customers are now able to select from thousands of items like home decor items, electronics, home office and toys or games and using their phone place them right into their home using AR. This gives you a great way to see what a product actually will look like in your space without having to buy it or order it. You can check this out for yourself today inside of the Amazon app for iOS but you will need an iPhone 6s or newer and it'll have to be running iOS 11. And last for the quick news Yamaha is looking to take on humans in a motorcycle race for the future. The company has been working over the past few years to develop a new self-driving and racing motorcycle, which they call Motobot. Motobot was shown off this week at the Tokyo Motor Show with Yamaha announcing that it would be looking to challenge Valentino Tossi, a seven time moto champion in a race around their test track. But with the race completed, it still looks like Valentino is the champion completing his lap at 85.74 seconds with the robot coming in at 117 seconds. And last for today, let's talk more about that iPhone 10, as more information has started showing up online surrounding the production and development of the phone. According to some new information released by Apple executives, the iPhone 10 was not actually supposed to be released this year. They had originally planned for the iPhone 10 to be released next year, in 2018. But thanks to pushing hard, they were actually able to come out with the phone this year, the 10th anniversary of the device's original announcement. But this 
phone has been the topic of much debate over the past couple of months. Like, why would Apple release two phones in one year? Now, I suppose you could really say that they did it because one of them is cheap and the other one is expensive, but why not just release the 8 this year, then wait till next year to launch the 10, but at a cheaper price? We've already seen that with this year's release strategy, it kind of backfired as more people are ordering the 10 than the 8. Now, not to discredit the 8 here, it's great for someone who doesn't want the latest phone, but at the price of the 8, why not just buy the 7? It's basically the same phone, but for a much cheaper price. The average person probably won't even notice the difference. Another rumor floating around for a long time surrounding this phone was that Apple was working to actually build Touch ID under the display. Now, they have come out to say, no, 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 that was not actually the plan, but I kind of feel like it was otherwise. Now, the backstory surrounding all of this is back in 2013, Apple purchased a motion tracking company called PrimeSense, which was originally being used as a version of an emoji. That's really where all this face tracking technology starts out. They wanted to create a new way for users to interact with emojis and even create their own using their face. It's kind of like if you remember the original emojis on the Apple Watch, how you could like swipe through and actually change the expressions on the watch. Well, it's kind of like that, customization of emojis. But now once they got the system actually built to actually map the user's face for all these emojis, it was brought up that maybe this could be a great authentication system. And after more work, Face ID was born. Though the question here is when really was it decided to build that into the iPhone 10 instead of Touch ID? Because there were so many rumors of Apple actually working to put it underneath the display. Even Apple filed patents for such a system, but just never used it. So after they decided to switch to just using Face ID, they could finally remove that home button from the bottom of the display, which was great, but then the notch was born. And surprise, surprise, according to some executives, that actually didn't sit well for the first little bit inside of Apple. In the first couple of meetings, they found the design of the 10's notch to be a big problem. Some saying it was not good and they were not gonna ship this device, while others arguing it was fine and users would just ignore it after a certain amount of time using the device. Now, the iPhone 10 really is the biggest change to the iPhone since it was originally created, but the new design isn't without some controversy. Now, we may never really know what the decision process was that went behind creating this new device, but with more people talking about it in the future, maybe we can really find out what happened to Touch ID and why the notch was really chosen. Oh, and why did Apple release two phones in the same year? One called the 8, one called the 10. So hopefully you enjoyed the video today. If you did, make sure you hit up that subscribe button and the bell icon so you can stay up to date on all of the new videos I post five times a week. You can also find other videos just like this one on screen right now. So until tomorrow, everybody, I'm Curtis Parody. Have an amazing day.